today from Kopi with Vez. Thank you for joining me again for another exciting session. All right, so there's a go there's a saying goes, right? Before we start, there's always a coffee before we start any live sessions at Kopi with Vez. So as usual, we are starting up with the cup and of course today is uh, I'll leave it to you to what to judge it, but today is coffee, yeah? <sighs> Thank you very much for joining me again. So that was a warm coffee to start off with. Okay, so um, we decided to go on a very great topic. I mean, that's what I've been saying for the whole for past one year, great topics. But um, today's topic is very, very interesting because it is a very close to my heart as well, which is involving youth. Because I believe um, youth are the next generation of our leaders, right? Um, and it's aspiring, inspiring dreams or, or goals or career when we were youth, if you can imagine, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that we want to achieve, right? We want to be an astronaut, we want to be a pilot, we want to be a policeman, teacher, lawyer, engineer, so many things that we always wanted to be. So today I'll be joining um, with a group of boys from Wa Chong Institution, right? These boys are amazing boys. We've been doing a lot of series of talks with this school and with the boys as well with different, different topics with copy events. And that is where we are going further and deeper into getting the awareness up. So uh, before we start our session, I have a great uh, four participants from the school itself, uh, the Wa Chong Institution boys. So let me first um, pull up a couple of guys up here. And then, um, and, and if you look at the topic itself today, I didn't mention any topic, all right? There's a lot of discussion that we're going to talk about, um, which also involves a lot of stigmatizations, stigmatize, or even judging and comments and kind of stuff, which, you know, on, on a particular person that we're going to talk about and I think um, the boys are ready so let me just pull up the first participant who is Chun Wei. Come on Chun Wei, how are you there? Can you hear me? Oh uh, hi I'm good. Uh, so I'm Chun Wei, I'm from Hua Chong Institution. Uh, I'm a SEC4 uh, student. Yeah. yeah. So I'm part of Project Concordia uh, and then we talk um, our topic is mainly based on ex-offenders because of Touch More. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm sure there's more participants coming up. So let me just pull up uh, Nathan. Come on, Nathan. Where are you? Oh, uh, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, my name is Nathan Kok, and I'm from the same. From the same I'm on, from Hwajong Institution also. Hwajong Institution. I'm from the same okay. project work group as uh, Chun Wei. As, uh, Chun Wei. And uh, and yeah, yeah. That, that's basically. Yeah, it. Yeah, that, that's basically. It. Okay. That was very humble introduction. <laughs> Come on, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What sport do you like to play? Come on. What sport? Oh, do you I. Like to play? Oh, I. <laughs> As a hobby, I like to play like football. Like play, like, football. Okay. So um, like so, uh, every like, every time in school, like when the opportunity like arises, then I will always play football okay. with all of my friends in friends in school. Okay. But then because now for like the COVID situation, I'm unable to do that. But then so when the opportunity arises, I would like to play football. Are you playing online football games at the moment? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, a bit. Okay, okay. So thank you, Nathan, for joining us. So I'm gonna pull up another two more participants. Uh, we have Shuyen. Hello, Shuyen. How are you there? Yes, uh, hello. I'm very fine. Very fine. Okay, yeah. you want to do your introduction first? Yeah. Before we yeah. pull up the last participants up. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. 
I'm Shriyan, like um, Nathan and Shomi before me. I'm also from Wachong Institution, and I'm also in Project Concordia with them. Okay, that was Shriyan here, very humble. I think he's a little shy because he keeps on smiling, but it's okay, Shriyan. After once you warm up, I, I'm sure you'll be able to kick it up as well. And we have a lot of our participants as well also coming up. So thank you, viewers, for joining us at Kopi Advance. And thank you. So if you have a particular question for these boys from Hua Chong Institution, put it under the comment section below, uh, below, and then we will take it up for you. Okay, we have the last uh, speaker, or rather the boy from uh, Hua Chong Institution, Mr. Lucas. How are you, Lucas? Where are you, Lucas? Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Miller. Hello, Mr. Miller. Hi, Lucas. So, you want to do your introduction, buddy? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I'll just go ahead. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lucas. Yeah, I'm, I'm Lucas. 16 this year. I'm also from Hachong Institution. Institution. And I'm also yeah, part I'm of the Project Concordia. 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 Yeah, so yeah, pleased so to be here so with uh, uh, with you. With yeah, and uh, uh, nice uh, to meet everyone here. So, actually, I'll just give a brief introduction, brief introduction of our project, 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 project Concordia. Concordia. So, actually, Project Concordia is a service learning project created by Hachong students, which seeks to help ex offenders and their children reintegrate into society to various means. Yeah, so pleased to be here and nice to meet everyone. Thank you. There was a lot of energy by Lucas there. So thank you. Uh, we have more participants coming up. So please, thank you. Uh, do give these boys a great support uh, because there's a lot of uh, topics that we're going to talk about. I mean, of course, it's pertaining. Um, like what uh, Lucas has said, Project Concordial, which is coming up. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, so Lucas, before we even go into the topic, I know you are representing this project itself. Um, do you want to just uh, briefly... Um, Tell us what is this project all about? I know you have introduced introduce yourself and uh, the project, but what um, what what is the reason for you to get started up? Oh, uh, the reason oh, for getting started up. So actually, like our project was started like quite a few years ago by a few seniors who actually under, um, understood and identified this issue of like um, crime in Singapore, particularly juvenile crime in Singapore. So like they actually uh, sought to target this uh, issue at hand, and they actually reached out to various organisations, which are uh, one of them would be East Coast, which we are working with right now as well. So actually. Um, through, through interaction sessions and various other sessions planned by them, um, like they have started this project on like helping ex offenders and their children reintegrate into society. Thank you. Lucas. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. yeah. Thank you. Any more? Any more? Any more things you want to say? Oh, oh, uh, yeah. I'll just add one last sentence. Yeah. So actually, like our project has been continuing for like around three years, and right now this year we are mainly targeting at youth and juvenile crime. Okay. So thank you, Lucas, for giving us even more in depth of this project itself that you are leading together with the other core members as well. So let's get started up on this uh, topic itself. I know um, we talked about this with the boys, uh, for viewers out there, and uh, we, we talked a lot about this discussion, and then we decided that we want to bring it up to Kopi events and also to all the viewers and members and all the followers are here as well. So, um, Lucas, maybe we can start up with you first. Maybe we want to get the questions rolling out. So do you want to ask a particular question that will I will try my very best to answer also, uh, and also to see where we can actually share and explore other opportunities as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so like I have one question. Uh, and to start it off, so actually like I've realized that there have been quite a lot of stigma and discrimination against mm. uh, ex-offenders. So actually, why do you actually, think, think this stigma is present, and like why are they surrounding ex-offenders in particular? You see, um, I, I mean, before I even go on with um. I just give you a bit of background on what I do, so at least you have a best. I mean, of course, as a host today and also a speaker, uh, unfortunately to the viewers and also to the boys here today, unfortunately our speaker will not be able to make it because of a certain commitment and he has to be there, so he will not be joining us, but probably in the next few series. Um, I'm going to quote or rather share the experiences that what I have done in the past uh, that, you know, that Lucas has just asked me. I think it's very important that we give lots of opportunities for people who make mistakes um and and if you look at it i'm very very particular about using words such as excuse me ex offenders i don't even like to use that word because we we, we shouldn't put a label or we shouldn't even put a name for it all right just put it as as, as simple as it can be the reason is because that everybody make mistakes you know um we tend to do some minor mistakes some goes into major mistakes because of the path and and areas that we might not even be guided well, or um, even for the matter at that moment that someone does a particular thing and then it becomes 
a big issue and for the rest of his life he will be having that label like a name right um so coming back to your particular question itself i think it is very very important that we need to understand about this stigma right and how are we going to be able to handle it very well i mean first of all we shouldn't even be judging all right so lucas maybe you want to elaborate more on the particular question so that i can dive in a little bit more on that Yeah okay sure yeah so actually like from our background research and like our interaction session so actually like there are quite a lot of, I I found that like there are quite a lot of misconceptions about ex offenders and like people think of them as like a particular uh, group or like a particular uh with particular traits so actually like uh, they immediately associate like uh people who is uh who make mistakes with like a particular trait so like I find that this is uh, a very important issue and like I'm not like uh, and I would just like to confirm with you or, like or like check with you like why do you think this is uh happening yeah happening yeah um very very good question um so in in I'll just give you an example for for in my career itself I do have internships right um usually for my internships I do have a matter of fact that you know I'll be looking for people with second chances I call it them second chances because everybody deserve a second chance and for some um when you give them the second chances they really grab it and and it's always a second chance that they someone proves themselves or someone prove the worth how much they are and then it brings up to a different level of a particular person and and when you do that you actually basically see that um, that they can actually improve within themselves but when the opportunity is not given to them then probably they will feel very low in esteem which i think that one of the question that we are going to go through but in 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 a in a big uh, matter itself i think the most important thing is we must be able to understand that we must able to give them chances if we don't and then i think they will not be able to make it to the next level um so coming back to the main question itself all of us deserve a second chance and i think we should do that and if you even if you look at in singapore itself i think most of the areas all right the most of the companies they do give a lot of opportunities for people with what we call the yellow ribbon all right yellow ribbon project which is that's why they even make it in a very softer word itself a sentence yellow ribbon to to label them or rather to to identify them and give them opportunities so i think that is a very very great thing uh, which i think in singapore prisons i think they're doing a fantastic job which they provides lots of trainings they give a lot of guidances which of course they will, will want them back to the society to be very productive uh, not to return back and come back or another to 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 make a big comeback after from the place they left so i think that is what a lot of officers and um training courses and providers are doing their very best and lots of topics that you can even dive into that area itself hope that answers you lucas yeah that's yeah, great that's answer great. yeah thank you for your answer All right. Um, who will be going to next? Uh, maybe we can go to Nathan. Nathan, oh, are you um, there? Nathan? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh wait, hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, so, okay. so my my question to you would be like um, um, uh, when. Many of these people, Many after they have been incarcerated, been right, they will like, mix emotions as to like when they have been incarcerated and when they like go into prison. So, uh, can, could you elaborate on like, uh, what, how, how would these people feel as well as why would they, why would they, like feel that way? Like feel that way. I think um in the past experiences of uh, topic that I've discussed or even when the, um, was doing the internship program. um which i mentioned earlier during this internship program i do understand um a lot of things might be going through in their head and going through in their mind a lot of suspense what will the future be or even when they are serving their their time and in during that time i mean people do think about it right um of course there are few cases where you know it's very repetitive but we are not going into that today but to someone who wants to prove i think there should be chances for them um even right now we are doing a lot of partner partnering with a lot of companies as well to provide job opportunities uh not to only to stigmatize in in a particular area or put them down no nothing at all as long someone would displays a lot of enthu a lot of energy they are willing to commit and provide 
uh, for themselves and their loved ones a better living for everybody who wants to do that, then I think they, they are able to progress in life. And we uh, often hear many cases that people who are given second chance um, prove themselves very, very well. Um, of course, you look at them in their professionals or, or even in the jobs uh, sectors, they do very well and they even go into the next dimension of their careers. So I think um, perfectly um, they'll be able to come up from that. And I think the only way they can come out is by their loved ones. I can be their spouse or can be their girlfriends or families and friends. But of course, leaving aside the public itself, because public, you know, all right, um, it's very easy to be judgmental, right? Sometimes you do not understand what a person might be go through. So we can't blame them, right? That makes the world with lots of different people. But um, I could understand if someone, you know, um, you know, put them into a, a, a remark, right? Or they, they tend to look you very differently. Even let's talk about this, right? You know, I, 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 got, a, I got a tattoo here, right? Well, most of the people, I, I think you can see, right? I got a couple of tattoos. Um, we, we call it art, but some people call it uh, hooligan uh, against the, uh, you did not come in a proper way. But it's not true at all. <laughs> if you look at the art itself as, as formed into different ways, and some wants to show it as an inspiration or a motivational quote. It can be any kind of thing, but then it becomes a tattoo, and then people tend to have a misjudgment on people who have tattoos. So which is, again, you're labeling someone. Um, even um, just an example for myself, when I go out with, with, you know, sometimes my tattoos are flashing, you know, people tend to look at me very weird or look at me. But that doesn't bother me at all because um, it's who you are and who you expect or accept yourself. I think that's important. But, you know, that's a mental resilience that we talked about all the time in my topics or even my yeah. motivational quotes or talks. So I think that is very important. So the motivational resilience is very important for one, and that only can be given by a loved one. Um, we cannot expect the public to give that because public will not be able to understand because it's what they see is what they judge. So in that aspect, one should be able to hold up themselves and you just have to build up yourself, right? You can't just literally fall for every time because if you are going to listen to the public, then um, you will never be able to come up in life or even to progress in life because every time there are people going to judge you. So every time when people give you a judgment, are you going to sit down and cry? No, no, right? So I think that is a very important part that one should have that mental resilience to move ahead, to charge ahead, to do things what he feels that is good for him, good for the family and good for the society then he shouldn't even take any remarks from that. Hope that has answered you. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, can I add on can to I the point about the tattoo, about part? tattoo part? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, because yeah. like, uh, I, for personally, I feel right, tattoo has like a very negative connotation because yes. many people who have tattoos are like, I don't those people who have been like, in prison or like have committed like quite crimes. Crimes. So, mm -hmm. Um, when like uh, as you said, like when people see, see a tattoo, they usually get like, usually oh, get, like oh, he's a bad guy, or like, guy, or like he'll never succeed in life. But then like, but then like, if they are able to, if they are able to like, oh, uh, like, like, like you, like as you say, have the, like the mental resilience. I feel that is a good thing. Uh. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you know, you know, I, I mean, for right now, because we are in the in the phrases of one, two, three of this COVID nineteen precautions and all that but in most of my motivational talks that i give on corporates or even for schools i think that's one thing that i emphasize that you should not be weakened or, or, or give in or give up for something that is not going to bother you because if, if you decided to do something great for yourself i mean it, it has to be a conscious right it has to come out from your heart <laughs> literally a passion something that you want to do it and if you decided to do it then i think you have to go all out about it because in the progress of your success or in, the, in, in your path, there will be a lot of hindrances you will face. The only way to overcome your hindrances is only by yourself, by pushing ahead and forward in what you believe. So I think even for myself, um, I mean, even I am planning for a couple of more tattoos, but that doesn't depend on the society. Um, that doesn't depend on anyone else except myself and my loved ones, right? And they know what is the purpose, but, but I do agree with you. Um, the society do believe that someone who has a tattoo uh, 
is 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 uh, you know is in another way. But if you look at all the uh, most of the successful people, I mean, probably not most, but almost, yeah, all have tattoos. Like you know, football players or even businessmen or even you know entrepreneurs. It can be anybody, right? Nowadays, the tattoo has become as as part of them of showing their ex expressions of art. I know, I know, some teachers have that lecturers or even you know even even if you are in the government sectors of course you can't have a uh, certain tattoos but if it's hidden very well then i think it should not be a problem right so i think in that part i think we are evolving but there's still room for improvement right thank you nathan for the question so um who's going to ask me the next one oh i'm going to ask you the next yeah. question yeah. so uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I know that we talk about mental resilience and its importance, but then uh, I do feel that sometimes society can be too overwhelming and they can judge you too much. So in what ways do you think like maybe um, social stigma surrounding ex-offenders like will maybe negatively affect their self-esteem and maybe how can they overcome it? Actually, um, yeah, thank you. It, it's, it's a very tricky question, uh, Chongwei, but I, I, I do know why you're asking me that. Um, but I'm just going to quote something that is away from the yellow ribbon or the X, um, you know, which I said, you know, the second chance, right? Um, let's say um, a, a particular kid, all right, a parent is going out for a lunch or dinner in a restaurant or somewhere. And if they, if they see this particular kid is very hyperactive, jumping around, shouting, screaming, lying on the floor, the first thing the public says is that, oh, the parents have not brought up the kid very well. You know, that's, that's very, very common judgment will you all agree with me that guys if you are if 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 a, if a child is crying yeah. and yelling yeah. and crying what do you think what would the the society will say or oh, the parent is not taking care of the kid properly not disciplining correct am i right to say that yeah yeah absolutely yeah, but absolutely. but the, the the thing is the child has dyslexia all right or a certain medical condition only the parents know and the parents is very positive about that and trying to bring up their child and of course, you know, they need it. And we, we see this quite often, but the public just jump into a conclusion, oh, you know, and sometimes the remarks are quite hurtful. Sometimes it may go into the parents as well. So can, can you imagine if a particular parent uh, who have a child with a, a medical condition, especially dyslexia, or, or a certain medical condition to make the child behave in such a manner, and if the parent hear a certain comment, I mean, it's going to be very hurtful for them. But that is not the first time they're hearing this. They have heard that many times. But it's become so seasoned for them. So, you know, before we say something or before we judge something, we always want to look at ourselves because every time when we point a finger, the three fingers are always pointing at us, right? So it must be very important. But nowadays, it seems that everybody is just very, you know, it, it, it is not right to say this, but everybody is just too busy about themselves right um we we don't ten, tend to look inwards of ourselves so when we don't tend to in, look inwards ourselves we are too busy ourselves you know we are, we are just literally running around because of the stress because of the environment because of the job targets and sales and experiences and data you know deadlines and kind of stuff so because of there's someone you know who even is very gracious and they might have lost the touch and easy to judge it so i think that that, that part, I think we are getting in as an habit right now. Not only in Singapore, I think in mean, most countries. Um, I think time to time, we need to take one step back, you know, try to be more loving to people, try to be more helpful, you know, but sometimes we are not, we are not doing that. So I think it's very, very important that we, we sometimes need to take a little breaks to identify ourselves. But I'm going to, I'm going to say a command um, that by one of our viewers, he's saying that it's sad to say it's social stigmas that hinder, for example, when I volunteer, I've been told many times this person is from housing rental, this father is from prison. It's really sad to hear this judgment being passed. So one of our viewers have totally agreed as well. So um, just because you are in the superior doesn't mean that you need to look down on people who are in inferior. It's very important. I think sometimes it's overwhelming. They tend to do that. But, you know, you might just become an inferior as well. You won't be at superior all the time. So we need to be, uh, we don't look down. We only look down to help people up. We don't look down on them. So I think that's very important. So thank you, Vijaya, for that particular 
um, comment that you have said that. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, we can go on to the next question. Um, uh, let's go to Lucas. Is Lucas going to ask me? Oh, sorry. I think it's... Oh, sorry, I think it's oh shoot. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I think she wanted okay. to say okay. something. Yeah. Okay, Shion, your turn. Okay, uh, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Bannon, uh, Mr. Bannon, in the event that uh, ex-offenders ex sometimes, despite their best intentions, sometimes society still has a certain stigma towards them. And as you mentioned earlier, sometimes they would uh, they need to have the so-called like the resilience to to and the determination needed to uh let's say push these comments aside and try to um uh, how do you say make a uh, proof to the society and prove to the people around them that they truly do want to make a positive difference to the people around them. But there are sometimes when let's say say the social stigma is incredibly overwhelming and sometimes it causes them to lose confidence in themselves. So what would you say they can do to let's say uh help them pick themselves up again and bounce back stronger? You know, there are many examples that I want to quote. Of course, no person in particular. But I think many people who are from the second chance, all right? Um, I, I tend to have this word second chance. I don't even want to mention anything about X of Adidas because I, I, I don't know. I don't like to pass judgments. But 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 it's not even judgment. It's just in a way of addressing. So there's no right, there's no wrong or about it. Um, I think it's very important that these these individuals that I know personally are very successful they are the most successful because they have went through challenges obstacles pain and they know how is it to be in the inferior they know how is it to be in the four walls they have thought about everything they are in clear mind once they are out they are doing their best and they will be very successful but then again, it also boils down to them because it has to be a very supporting group, like what you mentioned. The family is very needed to be very supportive. Um, immediate families, right? Because you do not want the public to support because the public will never be able to support. Um, you know, nowadays they have these tagging things, right? You know, you wear it on your leg and certain times you have to be at home and kind of stuff. So when people see that, oh, okay, they give judgment. Um, so I think it's it's very important for the family members to truly believe in their loved ones that, you know, it's okay. You know, we're not going to go back again there and you're going to move up and be the best. But saying that could be very easy, but doing that could be lots of hurdles and challenges. So it's never be that. So in, that's why I'm saying in Singapore, there's a lot of support groups, which I think we are going to talk about that later. Um who are there constantly, you know, so constant counseling is important, um, constant love is important, constant motivational is very important as well. So I think they need to improve on themselves. They do not need to justify or to prove it to the public because public is none of their concern. I think what they need to do is how they're going to improve and they make sure they don't repeat the same mistakes as what they do. Uh, sometimes we heard this before, you know, you're okay to make mistakes, but certain mistakes are very, very painful. Certain mistakes are mm, very, very hurtful as well. So you, someone do not want to learn through mistakes at, at certain points. I think um, you need, that individual need to understand that it is time to shine and shine brighter. And the purpose of that is for their loved ones and they're for themselves. And they got to press on. So when an opportunity is given to them, they need to make use of it because there's only i call the second chance the first chance everyone can miss it but the second chance no one should miss it especially for those who have you know went through that difficult period of time so that opportunity is very important and they make use of the opportunity and with correct amount of support and love that we talked about they can move mountains hope that actually uh, answered that yeah okay next we will go back to lucas again Mm, yeah, sure. Thank you for your insightful sure, response. Yeah, so I should uh, yeah, so uh, agree uh, completely with you that, with you that uh, like we should uh, look like we inwards internally in to like shine brighter like shine within ourselves brighter. and not like care about like what care other people think. Other people think. I think that's very uh, insightful and I completely agree with it. Yeah. So actually, I think uh, moving on to like a very um a, a quite different topic, which is like the issue on juvenile crime or like um children reoffending. So like uh. 
how serious do you think this problem of juvenile crime is in our world today? Um, you know, it's very challenging, all right? There's no one solution that fits all problems. But I think it all starts down from the families, from the schools, from the society. Uh, but when we say it's a society, you know, unfortunately, you will not be able to get that kind of stuff from the society. Um, okay, but before I go on to that, I, I, I got another comment here uh, by Christy. Thank you, Christy. With all the lockdowns and HBL, it is good to hear our youth voices are heard and listening with empathy. Keep such in initiative going on. So good job, uh, boys from the Watchong. Christy has sent uh, comments to you guys. All right, good job. Um, Thanks, Christy. We Thanks, also Christy. have Vijaya here. Many a times, um, inmates do not know who or where to approach for support. Okay, we will come back there for that particular uh, question itself. Um, coming back to Juano, I think um, I, I remember when I was young. Um, you know, your 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 food right, is always in one in the grass one almost in the mud which means there is part that someone can go a little off time to time so time to time a parent role is ever challenging is is challenging at the extreme not only to get good grades and great grades is to make sure that their kid is not going in a different path or picking up a bad habit and so and so forth but of course with the laws and regulations are there you know certain things still are under big control but that doesn't mean that it cannot be it's, it's not 100%, right? Like cigarettes are not sold to a certain age, like alcohol not sell to a certain age, you know? But I think um, it still can be available, right? So uh, the parent has to be an example, a role model, right? Um, because what they see is what they do, especially from their loved ones. So parents must take a very, very serious step in this. And I have, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure every one of us, um, I mean, probably you guys as well, probably have seen um, kids, um, when kids is around, um, the parents smokes in front of the kids, right? Um, probably, of course, you know, we do not know the situation, so we can't say much. But then then again, you are showing a, a, an example to the kid, it's okay. You know, dad is smoking, right? I, I remember when my dad smokes, uh, I mean, he was smoking all the way till his last day. Just, I mean, of course, he stopped for almost 15 years before he passed on. Um, whenever you want to smoke, it goes away far. But I do see that, right? But that doesn't got me motivated because he always say, oh, smoking is bad. You know, do not do this, do not do that. That's always a role of a father. But I think it has to start from the, as a parent. I think the parent role is very, very important. But given the time right now, with of course, with additional challenges like the COVID, right? You all guys will know that the COVID is also giving a lot of problem. With that, um, the pa parent might have a lot of uh, issues as well. So... It is a struggle, but it definitely can be able to manage it. But in order for a kid to to prevent the path, I think one of the important is to keep the child busy. Uh, idle mind is a devil mind. Have you all heard that before? Lucas, have you heard about that? Yeah, yeah. Sort of, yeah. Sort of. Around that. Yeah. So you, 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 you don't want your child um, to be very relaxed. and kind. So sports activities are very important. You know, it, it teaches you to be disciplined. And any kind of sports that you talk about, because I'm coming from a huge background of sports and fitness industry. So I believe that uh, any child should be involved uh, competitively in a, a particular sport because it keeps them intact. Either it can be tennis or football or rock climbing or some kind of activity to have that certain discipline at a certain regime, certain habit. And it builds up a certain character. And I think that has to be developed during the young age. And I think sports or fitness actually develop part of positiveness, which I think it is 100%. Um, when I was particularly young, I like to quote here again, and I was heavily involved in sports and fitness as well, right? And can you imagine I'm the only Indian in a lion dance group? I was so very active on that. I want to learn about things like different cultures and different sports, like basketball, hockey, swimming, you know, lifeguard, you know, everything that I want to do. So that kept me busy in my own courtyard. And I didn't want to look at other places and try to prevent myself from going into that aspect. So I think sports actually keep a person very active, a child especially, and keep intact. So I think parents should always encourage their child and children to be competitive in a certain sport. 
So it makes them a better person, you know. They want always want to improve themselves. So hope that actually um, explains that. Okay, uh, next one will be. We are going to back to Chun Wei. Uh, I'll, I'll ask the next question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I know that you talk about like sports being an important part of development from a young age. So um so but then uh, there's juvenile crime still does exist. So maybe like yeah. uh, can you share what do you think are some very extremely obvious contributing factors to the reason why people at such a young age want to commit their crime or uh, commit crimes? Um various reason. Like I mentioned earlier, I said that one solution doesn't fit all problem. Um, even when you talk about shoplifting, um, why a child does a shoplifting? Um, he, he, he or she can come from a very good family. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, we don't want to use good or bad, you know. But why? There must be the circulation of friends that you mix with or the particular child that mix with. But uh, of course, having said that, we are in a community. We mix with a lot of people. Um, to prevent that, I think, is it, to, to make it, of course, low crime doesn't mean there's no crime. Um, why a child get involved can be various reasons, but we cannot pinpoint into a particular uh, situation and say that why this is happening. But most of the time, if you look in a bigger context itself, um, the child's environment is very important. If the child environment it always falls under a negative situation, goes under a tremendous stress where there's not much of a love, um, going through a lot of hassles within the house setting, then you notice that the child start to look for love somewhere else. The, the, the child start to look for someone else in terms of uh, a role model. And I think that is where all the problems comes in. And I, and, and I truly agree because we cannot expect that to be 100% proof. No, it can never be. Um, but as a parent, I think it's, it's their responsibility to take that much of role in whatever they do. Make sure the child doesn't go under a trauma. Because whatever the child goes under a trauma in the first two or three stages of their life, between, let's say, from all the way from 10 years old or as young as 8 years old to up to 15 or 17, it's going to be a great impact on them when they have become adolescents, which is about 20 or 18 or 19. When they start growing, that impact is going to be them. But that is, of course, the future problem that we are foreseeing. But even when they are younger times, they also have an instant problem that's coming up, which, of course, the child goes under a group, and then, you know, he wants to associate with people, we show their strength, and then goes into societies like the secret societies, the gangs, and go into a wrong path. And like we even talked about crimes that happens. So I think it's very, very important that Again, it has to be emphasis from the house itself, the household of the children's settings. And that is where a particular child can be defined, either to be a champion or not so champion or getting into trouble. So it always falls under the parents' responsibility. But that, it's still going to be a huge problem as years to come by. Right? Hope that um, explained to you, uh, John Wee. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. So next one, we'll go to um, who's going to ask me next, Nathan? Oh, uh, yeah, I can ask you the next question. Next okay. question. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, like, okay, so uh, like, as you have previously uh, mentioned, mentioned, parents as well as so parents uh, play like a huge like part, a part in terms of like preventing juvenile crime, juvenile crime. Okay. like in like, maybe in terms of like what they do on a daily basis, or as well as like keeping mm -hmm. the okay. child, act child like active or busy, busy such that they do not like do not go into the wrong path, as you said, right? Okay. So, uh, could I ask like in how? How else in society else can you society like discourage the trend of juvenile crime, like not just in terms of parents, terms of parents or like themselves, or, like themselves, or maybe like or such maybe as like schools, like schools or like schools, other, other uh, of like official societies in Singapore that can like help this juvenile and like decrease like okay. their chances of like committing okay, so crime. Maybe what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, pose this question back to um, Nathan again. So Nathan. So in your school settings, um, do you think discipline is very important? Uh, yeah. Yeah, in Hua Chong, okay. school, the discipline okay. is quite important. It's the same question, right? So I'm going to make you the speaker right now. Let me just ask you, why do you think discipline is important in the school? Uh, 
why not everybody come with a different uh, uniform or everybody comes with a different timing to school um don't submit the homeworks or you know try to uh bullies and whatever why do you think that is not allowed it? because i think because many like for my school like in my case right i think discipline yeah. is a, like a type of value that uh, the school will want to inculcate to inculcate okay in everyone when they are young yeah, so like young. from so, like, like as you say like as you say like uh, like for us not going to school like in a standard uniform or like we must submit our homework on time this helps to train us like from young to have like this dis- discipline so like it helps to like prepare us when we go older so like i think like that's what schools are doing to like inculcate discipline in students okay so do you think that discipline is the most important or is there something else will also play a very important part as you guys are growing up <laughs> I make you think already. Okay, maybe we ask Lucas for help. Lucas, maybe you want to help Chong Wei for it. Sorry, Nathan, Nathan for it. Lucas. Yep, yeah, um, yeah, um wait. wait. Sorry, you were cutting the stuff. Can you repeat the, repeat the question? So I asked um, Nathan that is discipline only the most crucial or important part in as youth growing up? Oh, um, I don't think so because like if like if like uh, partic- particularly like when youths are going through like for example puberty and like I think they will be experiencing like quite a lot of emotions. So like if you use discipline to like force them down, sometimes like it may not work for like certain youths, which I suspect would be like one of the reasons why like youths are like very uh angry with their parents, for example, because like their parents choose to take like the discipline route uh, to like discipline their children instead of like communicating. So I think like interpersonal communication is also very important. And like, so you, you have to understand like uh, what the other person is experiencing and like where he or she is coming from. I think that's also important like uh, besides discipline. However, um, as what Nathan mentioned, I also kind of agree that without discipline, it is quite difficult to like regulate and like uh, enforce like various rules. So like, I think discipline is important as well, but it shouldn't be the only factor. Yeah. Okay, how about... Uh, and so we will ask back to... Uh, Chongwei is there, Nathan. So, uh, Shuyin, what do you think about it? Um, I think I, I do agree with what your point just now that the family does play a huge role, and that also, uh, since the discipline needs to be instilled in like us as youth to ensure that we do keep notice of what we are doing and how we do some things to ensure that let's say I mean I feel that I, okay I personally feel that that uh, sometimes the reason behind why um, juvenile crime sometimes happens is because sometimes they were like uh, um, sometimes they were rash or sometimes it was like as a result of uh, a result of peer pressure and uh, or like a mixture of these kind of factors so I feel that in order for us to successfully let's say let's say um, resist the, these negative factors upon ourselves and and let's just say, um, avoid committing things that we will that we may regret in the future. I think it does require a large amount of discipline that can be instilled from, from let's say our parents, or it could be the school, or it could be just from the people around us. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Dad uh, Shuyen. Um, I mean, exactly like what Lucas Shuyen and and uh, Chon Wei also have mentioned it, right? Um, and Nathan. You see, even though in Singapore, uh, we say you cannot litter, right? Or you cannot smoke at certain areas and you still get fined, but still people do, right? But, you know, um, a rule is there for us to follow. And sometimes people do break the rules. And, you know, of course, they have to pay an expensive uh, price to it. But that doesn't limit someone from not doing it. But the, the whole message here is, what I'm trying to say is that even though we know that the kids know that they should not be doing that, but sometimes they still do. So I think it is very important uh, because i'm always coming back to the family support because we can't say society because so- society is not feeding your child i think the most of the time they are either spending time in the home or in the school these are the two areas they should be or another part maybe about another 15 or 20 percent of the time in, in in certain activities all right if the kid is involved or the parents have enrolled it so most of the time is either in the school or in family which always cultivating about discipline about growth about success 
about improving from what you were from yesterday. So I think it's very important. So why we still have these crimes coming up, right? It's 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 never an answer we I can able to give that. But looking at all these trend toward as it comes, that most of the time it also comes mainly because of a, a particular situation in a home setting. Again, when we say that, we can't say solely it's actually happening because of the home setting. Because of that, you know, we can't. Sometimes home setting can be perfect. But then there is still issues rising up. Why is that so? Uh, does it mean that the school is not doing their job or the teachers are not? No. Everybody plays a part. And I think that particular child also should be playing a part. And, and once it happens, we cannot just sit down and say, oh, because of the parent. Oh, no, it's because of the society. No, it's because of the principal. No, it's because of the school. We can't. It's not about sitting down and pointing fingers and putting the blame on others to show that we are correct. No, it's not about that. It's about moving forward. It's about moving together. And that is why if you look at it, there are so many counsellors, even in schools, or even a lot of independent counsellors in Singapore as well, are ready to give help. All right? Their help is needed. There are, they are people. A lot of organisations are there. But sometimes people need to approach them. Then only people understand, okay, we have a situation. Okay, we'll talk about it. We will settle it. But sometimes... People worry about stigma. Or if I'm going to go on a counsellor, or if I'm going to go and see a psychologist, or I'll be labelled as, I got an issue with mental illnesses or something like that. No, it's not about that. It's about improving about ourselves. If, if you want to improve in life, if you want to move over the next hurdle, you need to know your strength. It's okay to fall, but it's not okay to stay there. But like I said, even when, when things happen, and then we're going to start blaming each other, then I think there is, literally we're just pushing the blame away. We are not accepting it because the, the, the world that we live on is our society. All right? How can you just walk past when someone falls? Oh, it's not my body. I don't know him. He just falls. I don't care. Right? We can't say that we have to help. All right? We must be always be, if let's say if your mom falls, will you go and rush to help? Of course we will rush. But if it's someone else's mom, why do we even bother? If you have that kind of question, then I don't think so. He should be a human being. He should be a human because it's another flesh. It's another pain. It's someone else's loved one. But as a society, what can we do to the youth? We can contribute. We can contribute in terms of activities. We can contribute as our, as our counsellors or do a particular thing or even support groups. So there's so many activities that you can one can do if a particular person has extra time to devote themselves to the society to improve together. Right? So I hope that actually answers this as well. Is there any more questions, guys? Because we are almost around 48 minutes. We also have some Q&A for the viewers. So if you're watching this, you can also ask us directly or comment in the comment box. Like I said, there can never be a perfect answer for a perfect question. There can never be. Uh, we can't say, okay, I'm going to give a vitamin C for everybody to have not have a flu. No, you can't. You still can get COVID. <laughs> I mean, just an example. But the, the, the real actual thing is this. How much we want to improve or how much we want other people to improve. If we see someone else improving, then we start to panic. Oh, he's improving than me. Okay, I need to improve faster. So it becomes a competitive in this in these current settings. All right, I hope that explains. Um, we still have about 12 more minutes. We can still go on. If we was have any questions, you all can ask me as well. Um, Nathan, you have any questions coming up next? Oh, um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So, um, I would, it, like, moving away from, like, juvenile, like, cr crime, right? I would, like, can I ask you, like, a question regarding, like, um, um, like usually when many of these people get incarcerated or like when they go to jail, right? Usually most of majority of them will have like a low self esteem, or like they wouldn't feel confident about themselves. So like, how can this like affect their family, or like if they are a parent, how can it affect their children? Of course, if the if you ever speak to anyone, um, I I have spoken to a couple of people as well. Actually, that's another line that, that, that I'm actually pursuing to go on into counseling and psychology, um, which my study involves. I think it's a very interesting topic because we got to understand when we talk about social psychology or social settings, um, we need to understand how we should feel. Why one will feel low in esteem, low in motivation, low in confidence, because it's been compressed. 
it is as no chance to explore his or hers opportunities or talents within them every one of us will have that talent but the only way to improve it or to show it is by platforms or by someone who actually rekindle that energy within them so it's all boils down to one's energy but even though certain times when things go wrong not right a lot of things can happen within themselves in terms of their health in terms of their mind settings um, imagine if i put you into a room for five days how will you feel all right we know entertainment no tvs no games no phone how will you feel a certain was, privileges that have been taken away yeah i will feel very like bored okay we are and just talking like, about five days like, yeah so five days even though it's five days or three years yeah so yeah, like really, obviously, uh, obviously, it would be like much worse uh, uh, if it's if longer period of time. Um, during this, uh, I mean, not during. It's the current moment right now. The pandemic becoming an endemic right now. Um, people who are doing their quarantines, um, quarantine period like two weeks and three weeks in their hotels, right? Um, there are certain. Um, I I do online training programs as well. So when I when I speak to them, um, see how they feel emotionally mentally and physically is very draining because they wake up from their bed i mean of course we are talking about bed here huh? they wake up aircon is there they don't know what to do next tv movement is there limited movement so can you imagine but the same setting without the luxury so it will be a very troubling period of time one have to overcome that challenge but of course it is a rehabilitation uh, they have to go through that of course once they're out, they shall not know or go back again because it's a kind of a reformative. But again, coming back to the confident part, I think is very important because the, the individuals that I spoke with um, and, and share my experiences and great topics that we talked about are very successful. Um, I'll say out of 10, probably about seven of them, um, they say that the prison life actually taught them a lot of stuff which the... the, the external world haven't taught them but that doesn't mean that one should go there to learn right never 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 but but it is an experience for them to feel because once you feel the pain and once you feel that your lowest point of your life then you will never want to go there it's always about evolving yourself to the next stages next dimension what's next it's about moving up and down all right and any failures they come it's like oh so be it this is just a failure no problem I will move up. You must have that kind of a mental resilience and that has to come within yourself, within the society a little, but within the family is very important. Imagine if you don't get all these, uh, the minimum requirement, then one will be drained out. And, um, you know, like you just said, right, for five days, if you cannot even be in a single room with all these privileges, of course, without... Uh, without privileges, how will you feel? You know, you can feel your life being taken away from you. A lot of responsibilities uh, also being taken away. But then certain responsibility given to you, like you have to wake up certain days, certain times, certain days, certain that. And there's a lot of uh, huge um, changes. I, I can say this confidently because during my uh, national service, I was attached to the uh, detention barrack. I was actually one of the provosts. So our job is to take care of these military or the centers, defenses, uh, retention areas. And to, to be one of the provosts, we also do our in-house trainings. So it's very, very setting. It's very gloomy. It's very dark. Um, you can't smell roses and jasmines. Unfortunately, no. Um, there's no cushions and sofas and beds and bolsters and blankets. You can't see them. There's no air condition. So the setting is very different. And once you are there, you do not want to go back there again. So there's a lot of uh, changes that, that happens on a person for the better. But of course, it could be prevented. But it has to means then, of course, you, you do not do that again, ever, ever in your life again. And it's all about moving up to the next level. And I do see so many of them and in, in a, in a, just in a day or even a week itself. So it's, it's a, not a nice place to be there. And um, nobody, nobody should go there. Yes. So, any more questions? We have we have last five more minutes.
Oh, Mr. Miller. Uh, so, yeah, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Wait, actually, yeah, actually, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Lucas, it's okay. Lucas, uh, we will. Okay, talk to Lucas. okay. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, so, so I have a question. So like previously you mentioned that uh you mentioned the analogy of like people walking past when like other people who are strangers to uh, strangers to us like fall down. So like it's quite irres irresponsible and I, I agree with you on that. But like sometimes I think uh like when I talk to some of my classmates or like people in society in general, like, I think some people are like fearful or afraid as to like how we want to approach uh like uh people with second chances. So like you may be afraid to like interact with them and uh like maybe on your part or they're all or, 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 or like stereotyping on their uh, uh like on their part so like uh, like uh i was wondering how you think about this and like how you feel we should approach people with second chances okay um okay just, just to come back to that that earlier question that uh on the answers and q a we talked about okay you know we we can just take it as okay there's someone else why should i be bother right um, if everybody take an eye for an eye, I think the whole world will go blind. Um, unfortunately, I will not say every one of us are like that. There are many who are just out there who are passionately, uh, with full of N2 of helping out the society to improve, to give back. I think uh, it's very important as we, as we evolve in life, as we become more successful, doesn't mean that you are able to enjoy all the best in life. Of course, one should have all the priority to do that because you are putting all your effort. But that doesn't mean that you didn't watch the path that you took. So it's very important that you should always be looking at the path that how one should be actually able to help up in terms of all these settings are very important. Mm, again, come back to the stigma because I, I, I noticed that st stigma doesn't only comes on areas of a visual judgment it also comes on if someone who's not doing well in their life or even for the matter of their marriages or, or their lifestyle or even sometimes status also can come in so it's just a very different way of stigma that it happens all the time and even if you look at singapore right now we do have some cases also going on we don't want to mention that um, that's a lot of you know stigmas going on. A lot of people we, we can see that people are very stressful nowadays. You you can't hardly see a smile. Uh, people are happy because of the situation they are in. But I think that shouldn't be the way. You should be blissful. You should be happy. Um, you're not going to live for 120 years. Of course, if you are, all my blessings. Um, the life expectancy of a human being is 100, but nowadays people barely go above 80. If you're 90. <laughs> You should uh, thank your lucky stars. But uh, so you, we, we should give back. I mean, you're not going to bring back anything. Um, I know this topic is a little off because when I talk about energy, when I talk about blissfulness, I talk about staying bliss at the present moment. I think it's very important as a human being. Um, nothing to be glorified about this situation that I do, but I would love to share with you. I've been donating blood for the past 17 years, about almost 18 years. Before that, I do not know what is the meaning of that. But I only came to know because uh, one of my very close friends said that, hey, you know, I'm donating blood. What do you want to? I said, why do you want to donate blood? Why do you want to, don't you keep it? Uh, he said, no, because we can save someone's life. I said, wow, okay. So we become a superhero. So he's been donating for the past 18 years. I've been donating for the past 18 years. And I know every month I'm saving someone's life. So does that give me monetary? No, but it gives me full of happiness of what I can do back to the society or back to someone's loved one that is going through some challenges. So why not be? So be it, right? If you can do it, you can do it. I think it, that's, a, that's just a part of example that I'm giving. But imagine if every one of us are caring and concerned about that. Because I do know in the previous talk series that when I did the interview with Navin, he is full of tattoo, right? His hands are full of tattoos. And whenever he goes in an MRT station, or whenever you walk, people are looking up and down, you know, looking from top to bottom. But I know he, he feels like, okay, for me, it's nothing, but, you know, but when there's something is needed in that particular situation, you'll be the first one to rescue. If there's a fire, you'll be the first one to run in. Where a lot of other people will be just taking pictures and, you know, that's quite common right now in Singapore, you see, right? If somebody collapsed down, somebody's taking picture. And I think we, we see that very, because there's a lot of photographers and videographers at this point of time, because 
they want to make social media very interesting in their groups so they always like to share all these videos but i think it's very important that we help each other but but again it can't go into that area of juvenile crimes or even stigma because it can't because with one person you can only do so much but there are so many people who will not be able to do that or they might not be able to understand the situation but if everybody takes a little effort show a little kindness a little love i think we can go far as time to come by okay guys we have only one final questions for and then after that we can um, close this series and then we can start back the next series on the next scoopy events any more questions guys nathan shuyan chongwei so your all your questions are done okay um, so um yeah sorry somebody was saying something i think okay. uh, uh, yeah someone posted a question there so like i think you can take a look at it at the chat okay so we got a particular question here if a prison was meant to punish only the offender then why are the offenders children being punished by stigma and lack of parental support which is true which is true because imagine if a parent um, currently um in a in a setting in a, in a prison and uh, if the society come to know and of course you know, like, like i said earlier right if we are going to take every word to word what the society is going to say you are going to live in their approvals let's let's put it let's come to grounds right we we can't stop people from talking can't you chongwei let me ask you something can you stop from people from talking is chongwei hearing that chongwei can you okay Okay, so let's go to Lucas. Lucas, can you stop people from talking? Um, I think I think in the past in the it's past quite it's easy quite too. I think I because think like most, most news is disseminated through, through like uh, uh newspapers. newspapers. And like right now with social media, social media, media everyone can just post media, and like express their own opinions. Their opinions. So like it's quite so, difficult like, to like stop anyone from like talking like, about anything in general, in general because, because of like social media. Because like um like one one post by like someone can reach like a large crowd. So like it's quite difficult to stop them from talking. Yeah. True, but but if you allowed, that's one of my questions, right? But if you allow, as a personal, yeah, if you allow that to affect you, who's going to be affected? We 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 know that we know that we can't stop the society from talking. All right, we can't stop the society from sharing. You can't stop somebody to like and dislike or whatever. But can you able to do it for yourself, which not to affect you? Is it possible? Yeah, I think yeah, if I there's think like a like positive like mindset, like you mentioned, you mentioned and also like how you uh, look uh, into yourself and like your family, like your family for, support, for support, I think, yeah, uh, uh, from what you mentioned, yeah, that can be, yeah, that can be achieved. Yeah. achieved yeah. Definitely. So I think you're spot on. So if you allow it to affect you, then it will affect you. It's a big melodrama in yourself, your hormones, your mood, your energy, everything will just go haywire if you only allowed it. But if you don't allow it, because like i said if you given the opportunity for other people to affect you by their words by their judgment their comments then you are living their dreams and and we know that we cannot allow that to happen because then you will not be able to go forward every two step you take you are taking three steps backwards so instead of going forward you are going backward so you will never be able to reach your destination of whatever the goals that you have set for so with the correct amount of settings which we talked about because sometimes it's not as easy as like one solution where we talk about it has to come it has to unfortunately we don't want to put it in the lock we don't want to say the situation but it has to come sometimes it takes a while sometimes it may not some goes under a big troubles some might not go but it's all different different color kind of challenges that makes a world all right so we just take this uh, particular question and then um there we go off just like i just said all right um the the, the stigma that i station is always there the stigma is always there but um it can also affect the child because most of the time when when the child is hearing words like um you know your parents are inside or you are such you are loser you know and and i think that also can become like a a bully right a bully doesn't really need to be physical it can also be verbal um accusations 
or even for the matter of going through different kind of motions that a person go through in in any segment so i think it's very very crucial that you know immediate support or even if people understand or realizes as the settings or as a community that you know if they feel that this particular person or this particular child is doing that then they should address it to the correct person and get to the root of the problem as soon as possible not put it because it can lead to a mental related issues as 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 young as possible right because then it it's what is going to show you in the next 15 years or 10 years to come by so hope that has been um, answered that as well so thank you guys uh, i think we spent almost about uh, one hour f- over one hour time in 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 discussing these topics i know i've been also saying that that you know there's no one solution to that um we probably will want to get navin back again on the next few series that's going to come up at copy with vans we were going to share this and uh, probably we can even go in deeper into uh, different um, topics but in 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 a nutshell i just want to say that we can't stop the world from talking that's that's how it is as long as you feel that what you're doing is righteous that you are responsible and you're taking role and pride in what you do benefits you and your family then and the society probably then you just have to do it you cannot allow this stigma to affect you and and and, and when i say that it doesn't mean that you just walk if somebody is throwing an egg on you of course no but you have to set up this mental resilience within yourself that you must be refusal to give up or give in in your goals in the way that you set up that you want to achieve it in to come by and like i said all the settings are different is never a, a, a particular thing but if anyone's going through any kind of situation of course you can always welcome to message me at copy events and um we will try our very very level best to get any kind of support groups to help out so not a problem at all there won't be any uh, identification revolt to anyone like you see, you see in our talk session we never mention any names if anybody ever need any help of course please help yourself to get help then probably it can be better okay guys uh, any final thing um lucas before we end the session you want uh, to not really. I, don't really i don't have really uh wait okay yeah so okay, i think, yeah, like, I think from like from this from this uh, uh discussion right i think like what i learned the what most was like how like uh even though there's like external influences like what you mentioned um like it's impossible to stop this external influences from acting even though like it'd be good to like reduce this uh like like intensity of like stigmatization but like stigmatization though would, would always be here to stay so like i think what we should look towards is like a more positive mindset a more positive lifestyle so that we can like improve ourselves and like look at ourselves from like um uh, and like ignore the outside influence so i think uh this is what we should do but like uh ultimately i think it will still be good to maybe like reduce the intensity so that like perhaps ex offenders children will not be as affected because like uh, obviously like stigma would definitely affect the ex offender uh, the, the, the children as well yeah of all yeah thank you mr lucas well said a big and a big uh, round of applause for you well done thank you mr vino <laughs> Okay, thank you so much uh, Lucas. Uh, maybe Nathan, you want to summarize it also, Nathan? Um okay. Um, okay. So so for oh, personal for me, right, okay. I think the the part that stood out most about this part was like how uh the parents as well as themselves they play a huge part in terms of preventing juvenile crime because the parents can in, like you can mention like they act as a role model for many of these students. And like if they provide activities to like let the children be busy then they wouldn't be like going down the wrong path yeah yeah thank you another end clap for you okay now we will go to chongwei come on chongwei where are you oh hello so um i think i really like like what we discussed today so mainly i feel i felt that we focused on like the more mainly on the perspective of the ex offenders which i feel like the most of the time the public and the um, society in general in uh, focus on so um yeah i just like to um, i just feel that uh, like maybe we, we focus a lot on the difficulties sometimes it's mainly overlooked uh, in society we focus on like their crimes and what they did in the past but then uh, we must also always keep in mind that they are mainly a changed person so as you said second chances so i felt that um every every one of them deserves a second chance and then 
or even though sometimes like our society might prevent them uh, prevent them from doing so i feel that each of us should still um, like make a conscious effort to contribute and to help them in the best way possible and i feel that uh today's talk is like a very good opportunity and a platform to do so thank you thank you thank you thank you so this is a round of claps for you okay so we'll go to shu yan our last participant here to see what he has learned or take away so i think uh my takeaway from today is that, is that um like what uh lucas has said just now even though there were even though the stigma will exist and even though we can try to decrease the amount of stigma that exists there will be always be a certain amount that will exist and what we can focus on and what we can also should focus on will be also to how to uh, encourage and how to change a mindset and also change our own mindsets that we possibly might have in this yeah thank you thank you all right thank you all right all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay it's a great session with the boys from the Wa Chong institution who's sharing about stigma we talk about a little bit on ex offenders how they feel what kind of help and um, it was a very fruitful discussion even i felt that even though navin was supposed to be the real speaker here today but um i i shared based on a lot of on um, real life experiences that we went through so thank you guys i will see you all very soon on our next series so for now we will then um get you all guys signed up all right thank you thank you yeah, Chongwei. Okay, thank you okay, thank you thank you and nathan Okay, Lucas, we will catch yeah, up again soon, all right? Take yeah, care. sure, sure, bye. no problem. Bye-bye. Yeah, all right, thank you very much for joining me again in another session of Copy Events. Okay, just realized never drink so much. It, it, it's, um, like I said, in, in this discussion, it's all about awareness. It's all about learning. Um, I mean, of course, certain answers might not be the best, but is within the best of my knowledge. And um, the awareness created by Wachong Institution Boys are very graceful because I think at this period of time, I think it's very important that each and every one of us plays a very important part in giving back to the society, even the smallest way if you can. And this has to be started within ourselves because if you, if you don't do it, then I think um, there might not be an, a little purpose of what we live, or maybe we can call it self-centered, that you always want to look upon ourselves. It's, it's nothing wrong about that. It should be. But along the path that we also want to look at other people. So we try not to give a lot of stigma. But right now, I don't know. In, in Singapore itself, I don't know. There's a lot of stigma that's happening all the time. And um, you see anybody's driving, they get very tense, very pressured. Nobody's smiling, you know, everybody in the traffic light because I most of the I mean most of the time we take transportations and all that. But you see, nobody's smiling. We can't see smile. Um probably it's because of all these challenges that's happening at the moment, you know. Um times are bad, times are a bit challenges, lots of obstacles, uh, people are always competing, and uh, we tend to love within ourselves. I think that's very, very important. And sometimes um we need to look out for each people, each and each and every one of us. I think um, that's not only to pertaining to what the topic that we talked about today, but it's all about sharing and giving love to whoever that's needed, even if it's matter of your own enemy, right? You 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 want to do that, or even if you that you don't want to talk to a particular person. I mean, if someone falls down or somebody needs help, you'll be the first one to go in. I'm sure. When the time comes, you'll be like the Superman. You know, automatically you will start to fly. Um, you know, fly to help. And um, it happens all the time. So I thank all the viewers who have joined us today in this particular discussion with the uh, Wachong Institution Boys. We talk about stigma, like I said, and many more other series that will be coming in together with the school, with the boys, um, sharing all these valuable inputs of their time, even though they should be studying in this period of time, but they have really taken their time to do certain projects. And these boys are great because they are always involved in a lot of other projects constantly. And uh, I think this is our third series that we're doing. And there are more series that's going to come up. So stay tuned. For now, let me sign off. This is Kopi with Fans. Signing off. Ciao. <laughs>
Thank you.